you for young Davion. And my brother, you sound like an angel now. A lot of the angels were men, okay? They were male, okay? We'll look forward to when your voice changes. <laughs> falsetto. It was, it was great. It was great. We, yeah, we, it, it was great. It was great. Thank you so much. Thank you, choir. Let the church say amen. 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 Would you pray with me around the message? Fight all your battles on your knees. <laughs> Before we ask it in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads. Almighty and gracious God, God of our mothers and of our fathers and our God, now send out your light and your truth. Now let them lead us now so that the words which are spoken and the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days in Jesus' name. And I heard the church say, amen, amen, amen and amen. It was a PK, a preacher's kid, that is, James Montgomery, who spent his entire life writing poetry whose poems were used significantly in Christian hymnody. It was he who penned these memorable words about prayer. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, unuttered or expressed. The motion of a hidden fire that trembles in the breast. Prayer is the simplest form of speech that infant lips can try. Prayer, the sublimest strains that reach majesty on high. 
Prayer is the Christian's vital breath, the Christian's native air, their watchword at the gates of death. They enter heaven with prayer. Amen. This second Sunday of Easter, beloved, I'd, I'd like to propose that prayer is for much more than just entering into heaven's gate. Right. Prayer accompanies us on this earthly journey. It helps us gain a sense of peace and centeredness and strength. It is true that we live in a world that's full of war and fighting and turmoil. It doesn't take much imagination to see that people are hurting out here, filled with anxiety and lack of hope. It was the Apostle Paul who reminded us to put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because our struggle is, is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers and against powers and against the world forces of this darkness, against wickedness in heavenly places. So the Christian, whether we know it or not, admit it or not, or whether we realize it or not, we're engaged in battle. A battle on the side of God's goodness. A battle on the side of God's greatness and God's excellence. In our scripture passage for this morning, the Apostle Paul humbles himself to pray for the believers at Ephesus to gain the soul strength they need so that Christ will dwell in their hearts, that their faith may, may be rooted and grounded in love, and that their faith, having been rooted and grounded in love, will, will lead them somewhere, guide them somewhere, bless them as they bless others. And it's not going to happen without prayer, y'all. For this reason, Paul writes, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. This past week, I became familiar with Sister Rosalind Andrews Worthy, the founder of the Detroit-based organization, Gospel Against AIDS, or GAA. Her organization started nearly two, two decades ago with a goal of equipping houses of worship to provide care for those infected and affected by HIV AIDS. Today, they have religious leaders who are HIV AIDS trainers and presenters, churches that are HIV testing sites, and churches that are condom distribution centers. Did you hear me, church? Churches that are condom distribution centers. None of that happened without prayer. Of the posture of humble praying, Sister Worthy wrote this. In a world of violence and conflict, to be on one's knees is regarding and demanding a sign of defeat and surrender. It is a position that says the circumstances or situations that we find ourselves in are beyond our control. What was the name of the video again? Out of control. She said, for me, being on my knees is a position of strength. I have found that starting and ending my days on my knees is the most powerful thing I can do. Physically, you see, it's a blessing to be able to get on your knees. Ask an amputee. Ask someone in intensive care. Ask someone who does not have the use of their limbs. Yet, it is also a position of surrender. And who is better to surrender to than God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She went on to write about her battles. Beloved, it was clear. The battles that she fights with GAA, Gospel Against AIDS, are plenteous. From folks satisfied with ignorance who don't know 
that over a million people in the United States alone are living with HIV infection. And of that million or more, that, that, that the number's probably a little more than a million now, 50% of those are people who are African-American. From those folks to, to others for her battles, others who won't acknowledge their risk behaviors, you don't have to speak to a group of young people long before you know the sexual practices they are considering are at risk behaviors. We got to talk to them about what to do to be safer. We, we got to hear from them and hear what they are doing. They have to know our ears are open and our hearts are too. From battles to to steal others for for our sister, steal others who still are out here stigmatizing and ostracizing those who have HIV infection, who are positive or have AIDS. Have they not known? Have they not heard? Magic Johnson is still alive. Over 20 years after he made his announcement, and if you get a chance on Netflix or on other sources to find the 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 wonderful video put out by uh, the ESPN the Sports Network called the announcement when Magic, if you, if you if you knew what went on behind the scenes before he made the announcement that he was HIV positive, do people know that 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 after that announcement, his son? Irvin Johnson Jr. was born without HIV, was not positive, born healthy. Do they know that Cookie has never reported that she is positive? They figured out a way to be together over all these years, do what they do. Come on, somebody. Beloved, for every battle you face, for every hill and every valley, you and I must enlist prayer and encourage others by praying for their strength, like Paul did for the Ephesians. We've got to pray and we got to keep praying because there's some things that won't happen without prayer. The body needs to be filled with effectual prayer going on. Preach, preach. You need to know, Sister Edwards, folk here started praying for you. Because soon as you left, the weather changed. I know the weather changed your plans, too. I know they changed the way things went for you because the, the bad weather was not only hitting us, it was going that way. Maurice was chased by a storm, weren't you, Maurice? The last time you went to see your mother, wasn't it? In Mississippi. All those storms up and down the Midwest. These aren't just, just, just people, just, just folks out on the road that we don't know. There's some people we do know. They need our prayers. Today, my prayer for us and our community is this as the United Church of Montbello, responding to the invitation that Sister Haynes made to us so eloquently and so well, and even impromptu to us today. Amen. My prayer is number one this, that we will rise above ignorance about HIV and AIDS. That you will commit in this place, that over in this week ahead, we, we have on our United Church of Montbello Facebook family page a link to, to a, a video that was produced by the, the unit, the network, the United Church of Christ AIDS HIV network that, that is compassionate to those who are, are, are seeking to care for those who are affected and infected and encourages all the churches to do the same. There's a wonderful video, a prayer video that, that's up on, on, on our Facebook family page. I hope you'll listen to it. More than that, I hope you'll not only listen to the prayer and, and, and view it, but YouTube does something with the metrics, doesn't it? When you put on one subject, it 
pulls up videos about the same subject. And that you 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 would pursue a course of, of, of trying to find out more. You can go to the library. You can do whatever it is that you do to find out more information. Just don't be satisfied with being ignorant about it anymore. Rise above the ignorance. Second, I'd ask you, I'd ask you today to, to test. To test. At least. 15 from this church this Sunday, 15 from this church next Sunday, 15 from this church on the third Sunday of the month. That'll get us to 45. We'll throw in five guests. We'll get to 50. Amen. We'll be halfway to the place where we need to be when we go back and say, this is our United Church of Montbello set of tests. Then we'll find the other tests that we need. Uh, for uh, health and wellness ministry. We won't leave you hanging out there. We'll, 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 we'll get the other ones too, but we'll start with our house. Amen. Make sure our house is properly tested. For, and it's all right if you, if you put the pastor's numbers on down and you don't like 15, you like 20 instead. That's all right. That's all right. But at least that. 15 this week, 15 next week, 15 the third Sunday, third and finally, my prayer for us is this, that we will realize the power of prayer, that we'll never leave it behind, that we'll use it daily to overcome all our battles, all our struggles, and all that separates us from one another. Prayer. Prayer works, y'all. Prayer. Prayer. Effectual prayer. It works. Prayer. We, walk, we ride on the wings of prayers. There are some of us who wouldn't have been here today without somebody praying for us when we didn't know it. When we didn't even pray for ourselves. Prayer. Fight every battle with prayer. Let us pray. Holy and eternal God, we thank you today and we praise you. We honor you with all our being, all our soul all our hearts, all our minds, all our strength. We thank you that you have seen us through so many ups and downs. We thank you for the traveling mercies we have evidence of that you've shown to your people in this congregation today. We thank you, O oh God, for the road ahead. Now, rain down your traveling mercies on all of us as we seek to travel that road that in the week ahead, O oh God, we might inform ourselves more fully. That in the week ahead, we might be satisfied to know the answer. For even if the test is positive, we got a way to treat this infection now. There's a way to treat it and to live a near normal life. And for anything that we've got to fight, any kind of disease, any kind of infection, any kind of, of condition, early understanding of knowing what it is helps our outcome. So help us, oh God, to treasure the opportunity we have to test, to take the opportunity to actually do it. Then, oh God, help us never neglect our prayer lives. Our prayer lives need our attention too. our silent time before you, our time both speaking to you, O oh God, and our prayer time when we just sit and listen for you. Listen for what you have for us to hear and do, say and become. Listen so that we might become obedient to what you would have us do. Today, oh God, I thank you for each of your precious people gathered here. I ask your blessing on all their lives, on their health, on their strength, on the measure of, pro, uh, of prosperity you, uh, you share with each one, oh God. We thank you for roofs over the heads of your people, for food on the table, Amen. for clothes on their backs, for a purpose to walk in. I say thank you. Thank you for your people, the United Church of Marbella. Thank you, O oh God, for this partnership we find ourselves in. 
with other Christian churches and uh, interfaith ways with Muslims and uh, others who would answer the call to, to make sure their congregations are tested. Oh, God bless their efforts too. These things we pray in Jesus' name. We all pray for, we also pray in his, for his sake. We all said amen. 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 amen.